Hey guys, uh, in this one, I'm going to show you how I simplify this AI generated model I made with Meshi AI into something much more clean and organized. So you can use the same trick for any complex model. So make sure to stick around till the end. So guys, before jumping into the uh, Meshi AI tool, I just created these three images using Gemini. Um, you can just use text prompt or something else. Um, but I created these three different images of the same girl from different perspective um, for ease of use. But you can definitely use a one reference image. Right, here's the site. You can Google it like Meshi AI. So you can see um, here we have image to 3D and text to 3D options and some couple of other options as well. And also you can select the image to 3D right up here as well. So selecting that, it brings us to this window. All right, guys, here's the place we are going to create our model. Right here, you can put your reference image. And uh, down below, you can see the AI model. So I have to make sure that you select the, the lease model, which is called AI um, model 4. Otherwise, you won't be able to download your model. And then I'm going to open my uh, image and I'm going to open my uh, side image. Make sure that you are selecting a, a side view, not a front or back side view. So then you can type in the name something. It doesn't matter actually. So I'm going to type girl and hit generate. So and then you can see that the model is been generated right here. And I'll open I'll open the generated one. So here's the result. So it seems pretty fine. Uh, actually, we can see some of the textures are a little bit awkward, like the hands are on the shirt, on the dress of the girl. And but it's pretty much, uh, but overall it's nice. So then I can come down here and hit this little download button and where you can select the format. The format, uh, we have a couple of other formats, but I much prefer to use blend file. So I'll select the blend file and hit download. So here's the file guys. Let me open the file first. So I'll turn on the shading viewport in order to see our textures and you can see that it's really nice. Our textures are also come along with the blend file and also I'll um, turn on the statistics there. You can see how much of vertices or triangles the model has. And also if I turn on the wireframe mode, you can see how much of messier the model is, right? You can see lots of um, triangles. So let's see um, how to reduce the polygon count of this model. So I'm going to teach you guys two different methods. The first one, we're going to use decimate modifier. So if you want a fast solution for your model, I highly recommend the decimate modifier. Uh, but if you want more clean mesh, I highly recommend my second method, um, which is called the, uh, the remesh method or the, the voxel method, let's say. I don't know how to pronounce that word, but um, we're going to see in a minute. So before diving into the process, I just copied my model a couple of times uh, and named them high poly and uh, low poly um, because um, actually we're going to want to need the high poly one at the end of the video. All right, let's apply our um, decimate modifier. So you can find the decimate modifier under the uh, generate and decimate. So here's a decimate modifier and you can see three options under the decimate modifier, planar, unsubdivided and collapse. Um, if you go into select the planar, you can instantly see some modification on the texture. Uh, if I turn on the wireframe mode, you can see guys, um, um, you know, weird. The triangle sounds actually has reduced. Uh, we have also a unsubdivided, you can tweak the value and check it out. Uh, but I'm going to use collapse actually for this one. So if you reduce the ratio under the collapse, you can instantly see the difference, um, you know, going on the triangle count is going down. Um, let me type something like 0 0.05 maybe. Now we can see the mesh um, actually, um, which is really, really good because we cannot see any texture issues or anything else. And if I go a little bit uh, more like 0 0.01 maybe still is pretty fine though it's fine and you can see some of the you know boxy shapes uh, around the mesh but the the vortex uh, the mesh is fine no texture shoes no anything else so i'm going to apply the decimate modifier 
and if you go into the edit mode you can clearly see uh, everything now is clean but um, actually that is um, you know it's still that those are triangulated uh, you cannot uh, create you know good animations with this model by the way um, so with that being set up um, let's talk about the sculpting method the second one so let's uh, get into the sculpting tool sculpting tool can be found at the top of the blender so I'll turn on the um, texture viewports and also I will turn on my um, wireframe so you can clearly see what's going on so um, under the remesh at the top you can see a something called voxel size and adaptivity which are the settings we're going to use here so if you hold down the R key on the keyboard you can see a grid like this and then you can move your mouse here and there to uh, resize the voxels so I'm going to set up like 0.02 and control r to apply it uh, the result is really nice because you can see the the codes um, right now and a real quick uh, thing you can notice that our textures are gone right you can see clearly that the textures um, we have some weird lines all over the the mesh so you have to fix that right now so uh, let me uh, turn off my low poly one and then turn on my high poly one because i want to show you something um because I want to show you the, the UV editing right here. So this is my, let me jump into the object mode and enable the textures. On the right hand side, you can see guys, this is the texture that came along the AI tool, right? Which is really nice, um, actually. Now if you split the display on the left hand side, and then uh, I can add the shader editor. So you can clearly see uh, my material on the high poly model. So we have a texture material which is the texture down below and we have the principal PSDF. So this is my um, low poly one. We have the same material, we have the same textures and everything is same for the low poly one as well. So that's why we have to change our UV settings to um, create things from the scratch. What you have to do is simply you go into the data properties and under the UV maps, you can see um, something called UV map, which is a UV map of this model. Right, I'm going to remove that and then I'm going to create a new one UV map and then also I'll delete my current texture and also I'm adding a new texture type in some name and uh, for the width and height uh, the resolution like 2k maybe it, it is not necessary to be 2k you can go for 4k or anything least and then create a new image right here and also I'm going to create a new material for my um, low remesh so I can write down the name something here um, and then we are going to add a new image texture also you can get the same menu um, holding down the shift key and a key on the keyboard and we're gonna go connect the color node to the base color of the principal BSDF and then we can select a created new texture under this drop down menu all right now since the texture is black we have no anything to see on the the material then i'm going to go into the edit mode and select the the model and then u to unwrap and a smart uv project and there we have island margin um we can type in something like 0.02 and then hit ok so you can see that the new uv map right here then you can go into the object mode and then I'm going to turn on my high poly one right because we want to get our material data from the high poly to the low poly one right uh, one thing you have to keep in mind that um, our low poly and high poly models should be at the same spot you can check out the transform information um, on the right hand corner you can get it hitting the N key on the keyboard and you have to make sure everything is um, as this if everything is um, as this you can select the high poly one first and then low poly one you should um, keep the low poly one as the activated object and then you have to select the UV map of the low poly one and then the new texture of the material the image texture you have to select the image texture of the low poly one you have to make sure the high poly one is selected and also the low poly one selected and the low poly one is the activated one and then the UV map is selected and then we're going to go into the uh, render properties and we have to select the render engine to cycles and then we're going to go jump into the bake option right 
Under the back option, you can see something called a, a selected to active. I have to check it. And then you have to go into the bake type. Under that, you have to select the diffuse because we are going to bake out all of the color data. And under the influence, I have to deselect the direct and indirect because uh, those are the light um, data actually. So you don't uh, want to bake out the light data. We only want the color data, right? Um, and also, I'm going to um, reduce the margin size. Um, it is not uh, really needed, but I'm going to type in something 10 or something it's not a big deal so you can type in 16 you can keep the 16 anyways if everything is fine like you have to double check everything is selected and then hit the bake under the bake right after that you can see a texture baking um, at the bottom of the blender and so the baking is done right you can see some uh, weird texturing like the faces and everything if I go into the bake so if I see the model, you can see something is off, right? So what's the problem here? So the problem, if you go into the render properties again, you can see something under the selected to active option. And there is a extrusion option, right? The extrusion is something, so I have to type in something like 0 0.05. What it all means is simply that the high poly one is trying to cast all this color data towards the low poly one. But the problem is the high poly and the low poly one the models are exactly at the same spot and exactly in the same size so i have to get a little bit of margin to the high poly one since we have added like 0 0.05 meters that casting happens a little bit above or a little bit outside of the low poly one and if i bake it again okay finally we can see uh, our texture is fixed now if you turn off the high poly one, this is the low poly one actually, this is the new texture we have created from our high poly one. Uh, right now you cannot see any weird uh, texture um, other than the, the something, some artifacts that came along the um, mesh actually. So everything is fine as the high poly one. So you can, if I turn on the wireframe mode, you can see code beige clean mesh um, and also uh, the texture is really nice. Um, yeah. So that's it guys, um, uh, I also tried some uh, of the animation um, using this exact uh, model, you can check it out right here. So I think uh, that is the end of the video. Um